in this section of this lecture i uh, will just try to explain that uh, how uh, population inversion achieved in semiconductor laser and as a result we get the laser light so the first of all it is necessary to understand the idea of energy band for semiconductor materials which we are using here to explain the semiconductor laser working so for the p type semiconductor materials we know that this is our balance band this is our conduction band in between these two this is the top of the balance band this is bottom of the conduction band and this forbidden gap is known as energy gap of the semiconductor materials where this line represent to the fermi energy level in p type semiconductor that is very close to the valence band just above the valence band just above the valence band this is the fermi energy level so the point is basically related to the fermi energy levels where it lies in p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor this is p type semiconductor and fermi energy level lies just above the valence band in n type semiconductor the fermi energy level lies just below the conduction band this is bottom of the conduction band and this is the top of the valence band while it the this line represent the fermi energy level so in general the fermi energy level in p type semiconductor is just above the valence band and here in n type semiconductor it is just below the conduction band so what happen when we join this p and n junction what happen at the time really with this fermi energy level which is above and this fermi energy level is below as compared to this one so when we join uh, p type and n type semiconductor materials electron starts to flow towards the p and holes which is which are majority charge carriers move towards the n type and near to the junction electron hole combinations take place and as a result after some times we observe that there is no more flow of the uh, electrons towards the p type and holes towards the n type so there is no flow of charges that situation is known as equilibrium condition when equilibrium condition comes then that time fermi energy levels towards the in uh, p type semiconductor and in n type semiconductor becomes uniform like this one so this is our p type semiconductor this is both um, top of the well valence band this is valence band top of the valence band this is bottom of the conduction band this is conduction band in p type semiconductor this one is the conduction band in n type semiconductor and this is the valence band e v so top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band in n type semiconductor this is slope which is known as internal barrier of the p n junction and this is the top of the conduction band and this one is the top uh, of the valence band and the gap in between the uh, conduction band and valence band is known as energy gap so the, what is the idea idea is actually we have two container of different level of water one is this one and second is this one right so when we join these together suppose i make a small hole here and this small hole here and join these two with the help of a pipe what will happen a water basically from this higher level comes toward this side and after some times it becomes 
at the same level the level is same right now this is the idea similarly when we join in a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor both together the, the this Fermi energy level basically uh, these energy levels uh, just uh, uprise and these uh, towards the end these downwards and situation becomes like this one and in terms of the energy band diagram we see this is the Fermi energy level this line here the space above this line represents to the holes all these states are filled below this Fermi energy level so these red lines basically indicates to the energy levels those energy levels are completely filled and this, this, this is P type semiconductor and here this is N type semiconductor uh, this is the conduction bottom of the conduction band and this Fermi energy level is just above the conduction band so all the energy states below it are completely filled and above states are empty so there are majority charge carrier in conduction bands this is the idea of Fermi energy level when we use the concept of Fermi energy level in a PN junction diode so what is the idea? idea is when we join PN junction the Fermi energy level which was with a gap it becomes horizontal it becomes equal in equilibrium this condition comes when when the flow of electrons without external biasing stops in a p and junction diode so this is our p types this is n type p and junction and this form which is shown here is in terms of the energy band diagram this slope so the internal uh, barrier and this width this distance which starts from here and ends up to this point this region is known as depletion region so without any biasing what we are observing that there are some holes there are charge carriers which are electrons in n type semiconductor and in balance band there are some holes so this is the idea and this is v naught this is barrier height so electron cannot jump from n side to the p side and uh, one more important thing is uh, which i forget to tell that this is very highly doped semiconductor material this is P plus and this is N plus so because of this majority charge carrier are into valence band uh, so into the conduction band and uh, majority holes are into the valence band right so because of this highly concentrated uh, of semiconductor materials then we apply external biasing when the current is very small this depletion region basically reduce why? because this height of the potential barrier starts to reduce so as a result electron from the conduction band from P type jumps into the valence band and as a result we observe some photons this spontaneous process basically occurs at a very small current and this function we observe in LEDs when we start to increase the current this barrier height basically becomes almost zero so you can see here the current approach a threshold value and then uh, we observe a stimulated emission here we observe the population inversion actually what is population inversion in semiconductor case large number of the electrons are in conduction band 
and large number of the holes are in valencement. This kind of situation which we are observing here uh, is known as population inversion. And here, this is our depletion region. So in this depletion region, there are majority charge carried in conduction band and there are vacancies into the valence band of p-type semiconductor. This energy level, this is the bottom of the conduction band of p-type and here this line indicate to the Fermi energy level towards the n-type. Here this is the Fermi energy level in valence band and that is very close or almost to the top of the valence band in n-type semiconductor. This point is important. Here Fermi energy levels height is almost to the bottom of the conduction band towards the P. This is P types P plus and this is towards the N plus. So Fermi energy level here is almost at the same height as of the uh, where, where top of the valence band and here this is the top uh, this is the bottom of the conduction band and this one, the line represent to the Fermi energy level towards the end so Fermi energy level the, is this one this one is the Fermi energy level in P time so this gap is basically from this uh, Fermi energy level in valence band and this is correspond to the Fermi energy level in conduction band that is EV energy gap between the to, uh, between the bottom of the conduction band and top of the uh, valence band that is EG now the question is how transition basically take place in semiconductor laser when we the current is at a particular value that is basically threefold current then this electron jumps into the valence band and when electron hole recombination take place a photon emits and also the emitted photon induce a strike with this electron and this electron jumps into the valence band so like this this uh, transition take place in semiconductor laser. In general, gallium arsenide emits 9000 angstrom of the wavelength that comes into the infrared region. So, we use gallium arsenide phosphorus that is comes uh, in visible spectrum and the wavelength is 6500 angstrom. So, the basic idea and important thing in semiconductor laser is to understand the concept of energy band diagram if one can understand the energy band diagram that can explain the, or understand the uh, semiconductor laser working so I am just uh, summarizing uh, about the semiconductor laser for which the idea of semiconductor is important we are using energy band diagram concept so here the energy band for p-type semiconductor where Fermi energy level is just above the valence band in n-type semiconductor the Fermi energy level is just below the conduction band when we join these p-type and n-type semiconductors what happens basically the sum energy level just rise up and from the n-type they come down and after some time they becomes an equal position like as I have given here an example of two container in which water is filled up to different levels at this height the water is filled up to this level and in second the water is up to this level when I join it with a pipe the water comes flow through this side and after some times it becomes at the same position so this uh, example is used to explain the Fermi energy levels when we join P and N junction then that time electron basically starts to flow towards the P and hold towards the 
n side and as a result nearby to the junction electron hole recombination take place after some time we observe that there is no more flow of the current no more uh, electron hole recombinations so that situation is basically correspond to this concept here fermi energy level this is towards the p just below the valence band and here fermi energy level is just above the conduction band and what was the idea before conduct this fermi energy level was just below the conduction band and here fermi energy level was just above the valence band but after joining this p and n junction it becomes down below the valence band and it just rise up through here in conduction band so right now this is the idea without any biasing of energy band diagram in p and junction diode now next when we apply some current at the result what will happen electron move towards the p side and hold towards the n side n side and a small current starts to flow so here we are using gallium arsenide so not uh, it behave like a semiconductor in silicon and germanium so the electron basically jumps into the valence band and electron hole recombination takes place and as a result a photon emits into this side which is a depletion region basically the photons comes for, from the depletion region and further when we are increasing the current a particular current that is a threefold current the stimulated emission basically starts to dominate in general at a lower current spontaneous emission take place and that we see in general light emitting diode so light emitting diode works at a small current but when we reach up a threefold value then we observe stimulated emission dominates over the spontaneous emission and as a result we are we get this coherent light so here what is happening the fermi energy levels is just equal to the uh, at the same where is this uh, bottom of the conduction band and here this is the fermi energy level set very high current this is the fermi energy level this is almost equal to the height of the valence band top of the valence band so there is no energy uh, gap in between these two so potential barrier reduce almost equal to zero so all the electrons basically which uh, uh, injecting towards the p side and uh, from p side all the holes basically move towards the electrons and as a result we get this kind of situation at very much high light so this is the this i just try to show the, this one as a depletion region and from here uh, conduction electron jumps into the valence band and as a result we observe these photon these photons move in depletion region and here we have a reflector of this side of this semiconductor then they fill the cavity and after some time so uh, negative proton starts to come up a gallium arsenide the wavelength in general is 9000 angstrom that comes into the infrared region so invisible spectrum that is red color light that is basically gallium arsenide phosphorus of 6500 semiconductor laser is used in cd audio player uh, cd rom drives optical reading and in optical fiber communication so this is the main application of the semiconductor laser so this is the basic idea of semiconductor laser i hope it will help you thank you